innovators, I'm Todd Wyant, and welcome to the Bridging the Gap podcast presented by Applied Software. You're invited to join our MEP and construction innovation adventure with a mission to propel this great industry forward. My guest today is Brandon Patterson, a founding member of the Iowa Skill Trades Initiative. He has an extensive career working to develop awareness and opportunities for skilled trades community. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to un- unpack the, the skilled trades and how to put a, a bigger spotlight on this, uh, this great industry that we all love. Love it. Well, how did you get involved in construction to begin with? Uh, my family kind of just born into it. So my family started up a plumbing company in the uh, late 70s and uh, just grew up in the shop on job sites, you know, on the weekends or whatever, driving trucks with my dad or I have uncles that work there. So be it my uncles and then basically anybody else who worked there was like extended family. You're always hanging out with them. So it was kind of like every time we had a company picnic, it was like a family reunion, really. Yeah. Um, so they owned and operated that for 32 years or so. And in the meantime, I said I'd never be involved in the industry and uh, met my wife and she got hired to a company called Ferguson, which is like a national company. Um, they do uh, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, depending on where you're at, uh, kind of like supply chain stuff. And uh, then uh, they moved us to Vegas after Colorado and I started with them. And ever since I've kind of been back in the industry, I worked for Ferguson for um, five years in Las Vegas and then Omaha and then Des Moines and then got into uh, real estate and um, really got involved in like the custom home side of things. And that's when I really got involved in the uh, kind of like the the Home Builders Association and started to get really involved in kind of like that recruitment of the next generation of our workforce. Yeah, nice. Well, dive into that a, a bit more. It- maybe is there a particular moment or story that happened that kind of gave you the awareness of like, let's, let's dedicate a career to skilled trades and and really driving people into the industry. I think it was really just, you know, sitting on a board for, you know, a handful of years and seeing our industry kind of just not follow through on some of the action they had with trying to, um, you know, they kind of just throw their hands up in the air, basically, I mean, not don't understand how to how to take the steps or whatever to get the next generation of our workforce and and what we got to do and the efforts and that type of stuff. And then um, finally having a group of people say, hey, you know, we should privately fund a uh, skilled trades academy within a, the largest school um, district here in Iowa, which is Des Moines Public Schools. And raising that money and seeing that come true and us being like, okay, we can do this. Like, you know, just really starting to kind of understanding the amount of work and effort that has to go into it on everybody's side of things. It's not, uh, it's not an easy task to uh, do what we're trying to do. I mean, just in our um, area, we're probably, you know, short in Iowa from anywhere from, you know, five to 10,000. Uh, skilled trades workers that's probably a low estimate um, so it's like how do we start filling those gaps one little bit at a time and it just found some other passionate people uh, you know whether it be through the home builders association or just through other groups that were kind of in the same mission and that's really we kind of keep each other energized and do things that uh, you know um, bring that awareness and then also um, show the future uh, generations what the skilled trades is all about. So Mm -hmm. one of the events that I I know you really helped a a lot with is the, the build my future. Can you tell the the audience, what is it? And then what's the the impact of this event? Yeah. Build my future is kind of what they would, what the education community would call it is a career immersion event. So it's a day long um, event where students from all over um, Iowa come down to uh, Des Moines or Sioux City or Cedar Rapids, Iowa City or Quad Cities, and they can get their hands on skilled trades activities. Um, you know, ours is construction heavy, but at the same time, we also also offer other things like 
manufacturing or trucking, logistics, you know, nursing, those types of things, the armed services um, and, and those types of things just to uh, show kids different career pathways and then also get their ha hands on those things. Like, you know, there's so many different schools um, that don't have uh, shop classes anymore or they don't have, you know, uh, what we would have considered shop classes. Maybe it's a basic intro and then they don't touch it again after middle school. So it's kind of giving them the, for the first time ever, maybe the first time they could ever get their hands on real carpentry and like, a, you know, nail guns and things like that. But then also, um, you know, welding machines and simulators. We have heavy equipment simulators. We have actual heavy equipment. So we have both kind of things that they can try and, and drive and do those things and operate a crane and operate a you know, like a drywall uh, um, crane that's off the side of a, of a semi truck and, you know, just all those types of different activities. And it really helps kind of open their eyes to things that are out there that maybe they didn't know about, or maybe they knew about uh, construction and the skilled trades, but they didn't realize all the different careers that are involved in those. Um, because I think that's part of our part of kind of like the miseducation or whatever you want to call it is misinformation. Like they, we have people that don't really actually know what's in the plumbing industry or what's in the carpentry industry. It's more than just a carpentry or a carpenter. They're not just doing one thing. There's multiple career pathways available through each one of those trades. So hopefully build my future, you know, helps kind of open their eyes to, to kind of just the basic. And then after that, you know, we really do a lot of connection with our schools. Um, usually after that event, we just get inundated with um, teachers or students or parents looking for information. It could be information on, you know, can give us more information on, you know, apprenticeship, or it could be more information on, hey, my, my son or daughter wants to do uh, you know, job shattering with an electrician or work for an electrician or a home builder uh, over the summer, can you help us? So we really do a lot of that kind of not necessarily job placement in a way, but it is, you know, we help them find uh, an employer or mentor or whatever, where we can kind of kickstart some of that stuff too. And that's, that's definitely our hopes. And then from there, you know, just continuing to build that uh, momentum and, you know, maybe the first year, I know for sure that we probably helped place or between job shadows, mentorships and, and actual employment, probably on 20, 25 people that we know of. And I'm sure there's more than that, but those are people who reach out directly through us um, this year, you know, who knows, maybe we hit 50 to a hundred and then, you know, just keep growing that. And then our mm -hmm. partners for the event or our exhibitors for the event also get inundated with, you know, requests for information or, or apprenticeships or whatever too. And that's, that's our goal is to really just continue to build on uh, kind of like a funnel, right? Almost like a sales funnel where you always have people coming in and out uh, of that funnel in, into our industry. And uh, I just feel like the more that we can put on events or information type things, then, then the more that we can continue to grow that the amount of people coming into our workforce. Yeah, definitely. So you, you mentioned the perception problem that, that people have around the construction industry. I think that there's definitely a, a big marketing problem in construction and, and outside of construction. I'm really telling the true story of potential and innovation and technology that is happening here in the industry. As these kids that may not have had any real involvement or interaction with construction as they're coming into an event like build my future what are the the aspects of construction that you find kind of resonates with them more and gets them excited for a career in the industry it's fun i mean most of them i mean as, as cool as technology is and all that stuff and it, and it is becoming more and more part of our industry um they do love getting their hands on and getting dirty i think it's just something where uh, they haven't been able to, to experience some of that stuff before. I mean, um, they're doing brick lane and all that stuff and, and getting super, super dirty and just having that access to trying something new, um, building something while they're there, you know, some are like, so like their, uh, plumbers union does a big welding trailer and, um, 
they uh, they do welded eagles, right? So they all the students that weld these eagles get to walk away with this really cool looking welded eagle. Um, and that's something they did. And, you know, it's just, I think it's just, it's just different than probably what they expect. I think a lot of people don't know what they're walking into until they see it. And once they see it, they're like, oh my God, I want to try everything. So is something that they love to see. And I think it opens their eyes to just some of the different career pathways that are available um, in each one of those types of fields. And, you know, then we have, you know, 70, 75 different exhibitors this year that were there. Um, and each one of those could be a business that offers so many different careers other than the ones that we're just spotlighting even. Yeah, that's awesome. So you had 75 vendors and, and companies coming in. How did you get the, it's, it's really like a community coming around and, and helping to, to push the trades. How did you build this network? Uh, it's taken a long time, I think, really. And I mean, a long time but in the scope of things, but a long time just to, to build those relationships. It's uh, so back in 2017, kind of when we really started kicking things off, um, you know, we had some of those relationships from doing that private funding for the Skilled Trades Academy here locally. Um, uh, but then we had to really start working on kind of like our relationships with the local unions. And then we had to work on our relationships with, um, the department of education and mm -hmm. trying to get their buy-in to, to what we're doing. Right. Like as a, you know, as Iowa skilled trades, we're not trying to put anybody ahead of anybody else. We don't care for union or non-union, you know, we don't care what you are. We want to spotlight your trade and show, you know, this next generation, you know, these industries, we don't care after that, you know, if they go into, one or the other, you know, that's completely their choice. We want to make it their choice. So um, we make sure that, you know, we make that clear. We have to go to uh, a lot of different places and pitch this. It's like pitching a new product, right? So we have to go to, you know, maybe a union shop or a non-union shop, or maybe we're talking in front of the whole uh, union or the whole association and saying like, hey, here's what we're doing. Here's the dates. Here's what's going to do. And, you know, kind of showing um, what it is and what it's all about. Now we have, you know, four years, five years of kind of success behind us. Right. So it's easier for us in a way to kind of, uh, especially for the past people who've been in the shows or been working with us, they know that we do what we say we're going to do and that it's likely going to be a super successful event. And, you know, so then it's trying to go out and find new partners who maybe we haven't, um, gone after before, or maybe we didn't have luck with before, um, and trying to add those industries or careers into something like build my future or something else that we're trying to do. Yeah. You've had a, a lot of success working with schools and counselors to better educate students on the options. What have you found that has really helped assist in that endeavor and that may be repeatable across the, the country as well too? Yeah, I think the, the, biggest thing is just you know starting the relationship or always having the lines of communication open and trying to work um every school is different and every school district is different um get outside the school district every region is different so like the the lines the certain lines of communication that work with one might not work with the other certain um maybe uh, like here's who i would talk to first this person isn't the same person at the next school. It could be a counselor at one school, could be an intermediary at the next school, right? So like you just have to make sure that you kind of work those things out. And that's kind of where it takes some time is trying to figure that stuff out. But I think everything that we're doing as far as Build My Future or Build University, which is like a virtual classroom that we did um, all last year during the pandemic um, and into this year is easily repeatable. Um, anywhere you know it's it's just getting started some you can't expect everything to be you know the same size as one or the other like some building or build uh, my futures might be bigger in a certain area or certain region because you know they have the population or they have the buy-in you know start small if you have to do it in a school parking lot you know make a roadshow mm -hmm. version of it something that we continue to work on is how can we bring this to schools that maybe um aren't able to come to build my future at a one of the four that we have so like how do we 
bring it to them how to just a little taste of what it is and you know those types of things so i think anything that we've done is definitely um definitely easy to duplicate um we're willing to share our information with anybody uh as far as like you know here's kind of what our budget looked like here's the types of people that we contacted um and those types of things and in you know how we've created some of that success and, and we've done that with multiple things whether it be our girls in construction camp that just got over or whether it's the event that we had with Mike Rowe back in 2017 we share that information with anybody who wants to see how we did what we did um, because we want obviously we want the industry to be successful and grow our workforce yeah that's awesome as you're having those conversations with counselors and there's you know there's such a big push to to send people to college do you had to kind of overcome some of the um, th that that push to to college and, and really explain the opportunity and potential of the trades and uh, have you gotten some pushback in that area? There's definitely gonna be pushback, you know, at certain schools or areas like the you know they have their their ways and and what they think. I mean, we've had schools, certain schools, um, be like, oh, nobody in our school goes into the skilled trades now if you went through and you ran some sort of analytics of their last 20 40 years you would see that a ton of people that graduated from that school went into the skilled trades and some yeah. of them are very successful um business owners so it's yeah i mean you're going to run into that stuff for sure and that's kind of where knowing uh who to talk to is probably best. Maybe it's not the counselor at that school. Maybe it's somebody else. Uh, maybe it's a coach. Maybe it's a parent at that school that can help you kind of navigate to the right people that you should be talking to to make sure that, you know, skilled trades isn't um, just one of those things that, you know, they're, they continue talking bad upon. I think a lot of that stuff is changing. I think a lot of counselors um, are starting to get it. I think that you know, my generation um, is probably the first one to feel the full pain of student debt. You know, my parents had student debt, but it wasn't like it is now. Now you have so many people that get into the near six figures or higher in student loan debt. So I think that we're uh, fully realizing it. And I think that this new batch of counselors fully realize it because they have it. They have that student loan debt and maybe they realize that like, hey, maybe this wasn't the best uh, career pathway that we could give every student. We need to show them other things out there. And um, so I think that that helps a little bit. You know, you have a generation of people retiring. Um, so some of that stuff that we've been preaching for the last 40 years or longer about college is the, the only pathway is, is starting to go away a little bit. Yeah. That's really interesting. Are there particular resources or uh, areas that, that you like to, to point people to to help change that perception and show all the potential of the traits? There's a lot of different stuff out there. I mean, we have local information that we can show, like even so like most state workforce development initiative or the Department of Labor or anything like that has legitimate metrics. If you want to see legitimate stuff with no sway, like I'm not trying to talk you to one thing or the other, I'm just going to show you some numbers, right? That's that yeah. information is all available, right? So I workforce development puts out numbers every couple of years. I mean, they put out normal quarterly information too. Um, but if you want to see kind of like a, a bigger overview, they do it once every couple of years, they update all of these information. And, you know, at one point construction was uh, projected to go over grow over 26% by 2022. I mean, that is, nobody knew it was going to happen last year. And Iowa was a little bit different where, um, you know, we didn't really slow down during coronavirus. Uh, and not only that, our industries grew just insane. The residential and commercial building was still going crazy, especially residential with remodels and the new construction because people sure, weren't sure. going out and taking vacations and people weren't doing these things. So like, what am I going to do with this money? I'm going to, you know, buy or build something or whatever. So um, there's definitely metrics out there that are easy to come by. I would, uh, you know, you can, you can go in there and you can look at, you know, like build Alabama is one. So like, if you look at 
uh, build Alabama. Alabama has something that uh, is actually in their legislation, right? It's through, it's in their state budget every year, but they've got some fun stuff kind of in their, in their, um, in their marketing pieces that shows like, Hey, here's your cost of living. And it's really stuff that they should have learned in school anyway. Unfortunately, we just don't teach enough of it where it breaks down. Like here's a monthly car payment. Here's your monthly cell phone. Here's all this. So here's how much it costs to actually live. And here's how much the job is that you just went to four years of school for. And here's how it like, so maybe that job isn't going to pay for your lifestyle type of thing too. Right. Um, and, and we've done something similar like that with the department of education here, where it's kind of just a introduction to, you know, here's the pathway. If you want to be, you know, kind of like a job superintendent or something like that, you can go to four years of school or you can enter the job site or the uh, field straight out of high school. You go through this and in five years or four years, whatever it is your field experience is worth more than that diploma and you'd be here type of thing. And here's your salary type of thing. So we try and show some of that. Um, there's a lot of great pieces out on the internet and there's a lot of there. I think there's more and more information out there as uh, our industry continues to have, you know, influencers in a way that join Instagram, that join TikTok, that join Facebook, that are out on these different platforms talking about what they do every day. And, uh, the process and maybe some of the money they make or that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So over the last 18 months, you mentioned that in Iowa, you guys were really ramping up and um, were able to grow and, and recruit a lot more. Do you see coming out of it too, that there's an opportunity to pull in others into the industry that may have been affected by the pandemic? And, you know, I think of like hospitality just being, rocked over the, the last 18 months. Do you see that potential to, to pull in other industries into construction? Absolutely. I mean, you have a lot of people um, that hospitality, like you said, working in that restaurant industry or that hotel industry that um, probably just experienced something very similar to what our construction industry uh, experienced in the recession. Um, when, you know, we had, you know, I think it was something like 600,000 workers not come back to our industry after the, uh, the recession. And I think you're going to have some of that in hospitality where it's just like too many unknowns, right? And you have people that have growing families or they want to retire or whatever. And they're just like, I just can't risk it again to go through something like this. So, you know, they're looking to switch careers, switch industries. So yeah, a good opportunity to maybe grab some people uh, uh, from different places and, and have them join here. Mm. Well, what's something that you wished everyone knew about the construction industry and specifically in the skilled trades? Well, that's a hard question. I think it's really just knowing the opportunity that we have. And right now we, not just us, everybody, whether you're a parent or guidance counselor or whatever like we push this thing like the choice that you make now is the last and most important choice that you're ever going to make when it couldn't be further from the truth that you're going to make plenty of decisions over your life that are just as important or more important than what career pathway you're going to take right now or as a like if i'm talking to a high schooler that's a junior or senior that's looking to change like you're going to be okay there's going to be other things after this one decision about what you do after you grade graduate in May, right? Like there's going to be so many other, op, like you have so much time to figure some of that stuff out. Don't let that kind of just hold you back and hold you down. If there's something you want to try, go try it. Um, with the trades, there's so many different things that you can do. You don't have to be, you know, just because you work for a plumbing company doesn't mean that you just have to be a plumber the rest of your life. There's other things with involved in our companies here in the skilled trades you could be a controller or an accountant. You could be a marketing manager. You could do all of these different things. You could go into sales, right? You can, and maybe you started behind a toilet or under a sink or whatever, but you've worked your way up to be into one of those things. Or later down the road, you could buy the business. And entrepreneurship is one of those hot things right now where everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. If you play it right, you can have your own business. There's a lot of people retiring from our industry that, uh, you know, they're looking to probably sell their, their, in their book of business here in the next, you know, five to 10 years with the, you know, the, 
the baby boomer generation retiring and that type of stuff. What a great time to get into one of those companies, get your, be a, become an apprentice, you know, then a journeyman, then you learn some more of the, the back end stuff. And the next thing you know, uh, you could be the owner of the business. So I think there's just so much opportunity out there. Um, and I, and I just wish that everybody would kind of like pay attention to some of that stuff out there. There's a lot of change and technology and stuff like that. If you look at some of the things computers can do now, if you, you know, like some of these jobs that currently have people doing them will soon be done by a computer. And I'm not talking about manufacturing or anything like that. I'm talking about kind of like your, your analytics types of jobs, or maybe even paralegals and things like that, where really a, a search engine and, and you know, a, a computer can, can do some of those jobs now. And, will start to be like, oh, well, some of those jobs don't exist anymore. You know, like, where's a computer not going to take my job at? I think uh, skilled trades is a good place for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, how do people get a hold of you and, and find out more information about all the good stuff you guys are doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm easy to find. I'm on all the social media platforms, even TikTok. Uh, but uh, I am on uh, LinkedIn is probably my most, most used one is just Brandon Patterson. There's not too many of us. But uh, and then uh, I'm on, like I said, uh, Instagram is probably my second platform is just Brandon Patterson DSM on there. And then uh, um, email me Brandon at DSM HBA.com. Check out our website is uh, Iowa skilled trades .com or dsmhba.com. That's our home builder association that I work at. So easy to find on those things and, and would love to talk to anybody about any of the things that we've done. And we're on, we try and put as many of our YouTube, our, our videos and stuff that we do on YouTube so people can see them and share them and that type of thing. So be happy to share any of that information with anybody who's looking for it. Awesome. Well, Brandon, last question for you. What does innovation mean to you? I think innovation is, uh, super important. Our industry needs to innovate in a lot of ways. We need to innovate on the way that we hire the next generation of our workforce. We need to innovate and come up with new ideas and ways to, um, you know, market and recruit and retain these people that we want in here. And then, you know, if you think of things like, so safety is always number one, how do we keep our workers safe? Um, that type of thing, that type of innovation is super important. Um, how do we, um, how do we add more things to uh, make it a little bit easier? You always think of, uh, you know, I don't know why I always think of drywallers, but I think of drywallers having their hands up in the air for a long time. Like, how do you relieve some of those things? I know there's new products out there, uh, kind of like exoskeleton type things where, um, you know, it helps relieve some of those pressures and things like that. How do we continue to keep, up, keep things like that? And, you know, we need to also show our innovation to people and they don't we can't just expect them to know that people still think that uh manufacturing plants are uh, dark and dingy and these things from the you know 1930s and 1940s and 50s and they're all bright and led lit now and clean facilities and the same thing with you know some of these skilled trades jobs it's like you just expect that everybody is dirty all the time and they're not um so just trying to show some of those innovations and those ways that our industry has changed is, is super important yeah, I agree. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, Brandon, and, and keep up all the, the good work you guys are doing out there. Thank you so much.